Good morning and welcome to worship. It is a delight to have you with us worshiping in this way on this third Sunday of Easter. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Oh, my friends, like I said, it is a delight to be able to come to you and worship and to share in God's word today, together today. Um, I don't have any announcements other than I hope that you are doing well. Um, Pastor Eric is back with us and will be sharing in the children's message and the sermon today at the gospel reading. And so we look forward to hearing his words today. So my friends, welcome. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another with a moment of silence. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who was rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Let us pray together the prayer of the day. And we say these words together. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this third Sunday of Easter is coming from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter addresses the people. You Israelites, why do you wander at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith is through Jesus, has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this Sunday is coming from Psalm 4. And we'll read responsively by half whole verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayers. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? 
Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the anointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone, O Lord. Make me rest secure. Our second reading is coming from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he was righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite our young people to the, to the screen now for a children's message from Pastor Eric. Good morning. We invite you to come forward for our children's message this morning. And I want to talk to you about something that you may experience each day that you go to school, and it's your five senses. Do you know what your five senses are and how you use them to engage and perceive and navigate through the world? Well, here's a way that I've remembered what my five senses are. First, it's all on your head and your face. So it's one position for us to remember. We have our eyes, which is the sense of sight. We have our noses, which is our sense of smell. We have our mouths, which is the sense of taste. We have our ears, which is our sense of hearing. And we have our heads, if we use our hands to just pat our heads, the sense of touch. And those are five senses that we use each and every day. And oftentimes, I bet, when you're in school and you have your teachers teaching you something, they use those five senses to help you learn. Where you may hear your teachers say, well, listen, listen to what I'm saying. If you know the answer, raise your hand. So if you hear them, you raise your hand, and then all of a sudden you see your hand being raised. Those are two of the senses, right? Other times, you may be doing projects in class, and maybe it's a science project, and you're using your hands, and you may be touching it, or maybe it's some type of Play-Doh or some type of art project, and you can smell it, so you're engaging, and you're seeing it, and you're using all these senses to learn these essential gifts to whatever the teachers are teaching, whether that's art class or math class or reading class or anything that you're doing in school. Well, what's really neat is Jesus in our gospel reading today uses those exact five senses. He goes and meets with his followers, and he finds ways to engage their sight, their smell, their touch, their taste, their hearing, and their touch. He uses all five senses to help them realize that he has risen from the dead, and he's no longer a ghost but he's a risen Christ in the flesh and bone so that they can see him and experience him. So just like you learn in school, Jesus uses those five senses to teach his followers then and all of us now that he has risen from the dead as he promised, and we are to proclaim this good news with the entire world, our community, our church, and our world. So I invite you, as you use your five senses today, 
is used again, see, smell, taste, hear, or touch. May you experience Jesus out in the world as you help others or someone helps you or you walk to school and engage in things each and every day. Well, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we lift up thanksgiving, this opportunity to come together in this way. We are so thankful for our senses, the senses that you've given us to be able to use in our lives. For those of us who have the senses we do, may we use them for the greater good of others. Help us, if we can see, to see Jesus and others. Help us, if we can hear, to hear and to listen for Jesus amongst us. For those who can touch, be able to be touched by Jesus. For those who can taste, to taste Jesus. For those who can smell, to breathe in peace. Recognizing that we may have all five senses, or we may have several senses, but regardless, we'll be able to tell Jesus is a part of each and every one of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance And forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you. From our Lord Jesus Christ. Most able bodied humans have five senses, which include touch, sight, hearing, smell, and taste. These senses transmit information to the brain to help each of us understand and perceive the world around us. Jesus uses all five of the senses to communicate a simple but timeless message to his followers in the past and the present. In our gospel reading that he has fulfilled scripture in accordance with the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And he kept his promise to rise from the dead on the third day that he is in no way a ghost, because that is what his followers thought they were initially experiencing. As ghosts were a great fear of many ancient cultures during this time. Through the sense of hearing, he stood among them and said, peace be with you. Why are you frightened? Don't have any doubts. I can only imagine his followers starting to gain confidence in believing in Jesus and his promises. As they look at each other and say, I can hear him, you can hear him, we are hearing him together. Through the sense of sight, he says, look at my hands 
and my feet see that it is I, myself. Again, his followers are putting all the pieces together and are starting to realize this is for real. As I imagine, they continue to look at each other and say, I can see him. You can see him. We are seeing him together. The sense of touch. He says, touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Again, his followers, not fully sure, are now touching their beloved Messiah in the flesh. And I can only envision how they are thinking about what this means for their lives filled with forgiveness. As they continue discussing among themselves, I can touch him, you can touch him, we are touching him together. The sense of taste of following happened. His followers were joyful, but still disbelieving. And so he said, have you anything to eat? They gave Jesus a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. At this point, I can only think about how they are beaming with excitement and joy because Jesus is with them in the flesh, eating alongside them just as he did before. There's no doubt in their minds that he rose from the dead as he promised. And they must have said to each other, I can eat with them, you can eat with them. We are eating with him together. And lastly, the sense of smell. Jesus' followers at this moment must have been sitting with him and those gathered still eating. And at this point, I can imagine not only are they not talking, but breathing in the smell of tasty food and the reality that Jesus, the living word of God, is amongst them again and all is well. And all of his followers having a heavy burden of not understanding, being scared and terrified and confused, lifted off of their shoulders, and they experienced a moment of just being content. And in true Jesus fashion, he uses this opportunity to teach his followers one more comforting but challenging reality before he ascends into heaven by stating, my followers, you are witnesses of these things, which seems nice and easy at face value. But if you investigate the actual Greek word for witness written in scripture, which is martis, it has both a comforting and challenging reality that his followers would immediately understand as the word has two distinct meanings. First meaning includes witnesses who deliver a divine message of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, which is easy for us to understand as well. However, the second meaning includes witnesses who deliver this divine message with the understanding that they may lose their life as a martyr in doing so, meaning they may experience hardship or be killed because of their proclamation of the good news of Jesus to others. So the reality of sharing the timeless divine message of eternal life in Christ filled with forgiveness can encompass both joy and hardship. A modern real-life example of a Christian witness experiencing the comfort and challenges while spreading the divine message of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is found in the following story about Alexander Men, a Christian who lived and spread the good news of Jesus in Russia, written by Ives Mont, that described the following. January 22, 1935, Alexander Men was born in the Soviet Union during the Stalinist era. 1960, he was ordained as a pastor 
and preached about Jesus' life, death, and resurrection without compromise as a courageous witness to the gospel. As he was a Christian minister during a time of decades of enforced atheist propaganda, when Christians were subjected to increased harassment and regularly brought in for questioning. Alexander was quoted as stating, I have always wanted to be a Christian living not by candlelight, but in the direct light of the sun. This came true 28 years later in 1988 during the regime of Gorbachev, when Christians and church leaders such as Alexander were able to openly publish spiritual writings and offer public lectures on Christianity and the Bible, such as we are doing right now during worship. In response, he worked at a frantic pace, as if aware that his time was limited to proclaim the good news of Jesus. As there were some people who felt that Gorbachev was betraying the ideals of the revolution by granting liberty to religious zealots like Alexander. September 9, 1990, unknown assailants attacked and killed Alexander on his way to church. Fortunately, the identity and motives of the killers were never learned. A martyr fate that Alexander had anticipated, and he accepted this reality with confidence that those who might take his life were powerless to suppress the gospel. No matter what, if he lived or died as a witness of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, the good news of Jesus would be shared as Jesus calls all of his followers to do, including us. And his life as a witness to Jesus in this world made a positive impact for Russia and the world, as seen by the communities who studied, heard, and embraced Jesus during challenging times in their lives. So the following question remains for each of us gathered for worship in this way. How can we each experience the risen Jesus and his promises and share this good news with others? I encourage all of us in answering this question to think about how we each experience Jesus through the five senses. Hearing the word of God and how it provides us comfort. Seeing Jesus in our loving actions towards each other. Touching Jesus through helping those in need. Tasting Jesus in the sacramental meal of Holy Communion. And through breathing in a sense of peace. When we realize the eternal life in Christ and forgiveness of sin, we have received. And then going out to witness and share this good news of Jesus with others, no matter what, how uncomfortable we may feel or the challenges we face in doing so, whether that is tied to the pandemic or not. Because the good news of the risen Jesus will never stop being meaningful, life-changing, or from being proclaimed, no matter what. Let us pray. Five senses you have given me to know and love and worship thee. Please help me use them as I should to show your love and do what's good. Two eyes I have and it's my duty to seek the ever-present beauty. And when I see the faults of others, remind me that they are my siblings. My eyes are not just meant to hear but to share the burdens others bear. Help me to listen as they talk so they're not alone on their walk. When I taste blessings that you give, let me not live to eat, but eat to live. Open my heart to want to share that through me the poor will know you care. Let me pause and be content to inhale perfume and other scents like fresh-baked bread and springtime flowers, apple blossoms and light, warm showers. These hands are meant to hold those dear, to love and serve, 
Make my mission clear. Guide me each day in all I do, so that others see not me, but you. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we say these words together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wandering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of this earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to the to national, state, and local leaders of our people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and you answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. We lift before you today Brody Setter, Kathleen Bruns Doppler, Kristen Gromish, Richard Erickson, and all others whom we name from our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving Father, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace that you have promised that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, and also with you. My friends, Share God's peace with one another in your households at this time. As we recognize the gifts that God has granted to us that we place before Him at this altar, let us pray the prayer together. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that our Father has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, as we begin to leave this place of worship, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your faces and the rains fall gentle upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. My friends, it has been a delight to be able to worship with you this day. As you go out into this day, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. We'll see you next week.